welcome back. Here we are, a beautiful new week yet again. They just keep coming and I am so lucky I get to share it with you guys. Today is Monday and if you know what we do here, then you know we're gonna be creating something fun and new. So stick with me to see what we'll be creating today. But before we create, let's talk about our riddle. So our riddle today is, what is something that goes up and down but never really moves? I'll let you guys know at the end of the video. So stay tuned. Now let's go make something new. June is Pride Month and to celebrate while we're at home, we are going to be making rainbow creations with things that we have all around our house. We don't need to go anywhere for them. What you guys will need for today's video is a paper towel roll or numerous toilet paper rolls, some yarn, and paint. If you don't have paint, that's fine. You can use crayons or markers. It is just effective as coloring to get that same rainbow color. Now, the last thing you'll need are some scissors. Please make sure you get permission before using the scissors. We'd rather be safe than sorry. So please get permission and make sure this is how you hold them. I've seen some crazy folks running with scissors like this. We hold them like this. <laughs> and now that we know what we need, let's get into actually doing it. For our creation today, it's important that we know about the rainbow, right? What colors make it up and what order they go in. Roy G. Bibb is a helpful little tool you can use to do that. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. Those are the colors that make up the rainbow. Now, today, the craft we'll be making to make up the little rainbow is a necklace. We're gonna be making a necklace out of our paper towel rolls. You might be asking, Emma, how? It's not a necklace. <laughs> and I'll tell you how. That's where the yarn comes in. We're gonna be cutting up our paper towel roll into equal parts to make a fun little necklace. So I've already taken the liberty of dividing them up. As you can see, they've all got their own little section. Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. And now I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna begin to cut where I've marked. So as you can see, as I showed you, I marked them. Now I'm gonna be using my scissors. Again, please make sure you get permission. I'm gonna cut them up and I'll see you after that. All right, so here are our little circles. So I've got them labeled, but you don't really need them labeled because one is just gonna get each color. I'm gonna paint them off screen now and I will join you guys in a second to show you my finished colored product. Our necklace is gonna need something to hang on, right? And like I said, we'll be using yarn. But I wanted to let you guys know, I'm not just going to be going boop and done. I'm going to be braiding it and then tying it off. That way it just adds a little bit more pizzazz. Who doesn't want more pizzazz? Anyways, in just a second, I'll show you the finished product and I think it's pretty cute. I'm excited to share it with you guys. Who is ready to see our finished product? Ah, look at it, look at it, look at it. It's so cute. As I was making this, I began to realize that I could also make this a decoration around my house. If I had a surplus or a lot of extra toilet paper or paper towel rolls, I could make this a decoration to hang up in my room, kind of like Christmas garland, but unfortunately, <laughs> I don't have that many extras. But if you do, I encourage you to maybe try it out. But for now, I am very pleased and very happy with my little necklace. Ah, it's so cute. I'll put it on. Oh, I just, I love it. Look at it. Today's positive action is again going to cover self-concept. Now, I know we've talked about this before, right guys? And you might be thinking, oh my goodness, Emma, you're just repeating things. Yes, you're right, I am. Because it's important to repeat things. 
When we go to the gym, we don't go to the gym once and never return to work out our muscles, right? No, we need to go back and we need to repeat it. We need to keep training, working out those muscles. This is no different. The muscles are just in our brains, our emotions, and they're just things we need to work on. So we will cover things that overlap a lot. But back to self-concept. Yesterday, we kind of talked about concept or self-concept in a very broad, general type of way. Today, I'm gonna let you guys know that self-concept is an awesome tool. Because when we're aware of our headspace, that term might sound familiar, then we have many more opportunities, right? Something I've said again before. Now today, we're gonna talk about how that affects us. When we are aware, when we have a good self-concept, self-awareness of what's going on. If we're in a negative headspace, we're much more able, we have the tools to pull ourselves out of that or maybe help ourselves feel better in a nice, effective way. And that's always great because when we feel good about who we are, what we're doing and how we treat others, we are successful and prosperous. What I mean by that is we are reaching our full potential. We are moving forward to becoming the best person we wanna be. And that's what it's all about, right? Spreading kindness and putting your best foot forward. At least I hope so. And I really do encourage you guys to work a little bit more on some self-awareness or self-concept stuff. Like maybe think about my emotions, maybe keep a journal. I've been feeling this way, I've been feeling this way. Today this happened and it made me feel this way. You know, it doesn't have to be anything crazy intense where you write down every thought you've had ever. No, 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 no. It's just the big things. The things that at the end of the day, when you look back and you remember, oh, that happened, that upset me, or that happened, that made me feel really good, then write it down. I'm telling you, journaling is a great tool to become more self-aware. And who doesn't wanna be more self-aware because I'm telling you, it is going to push you to be the best person you can be. So now that we've talked about our positive action or positive tip, let's scoot right on over to reading our book because things are about to get crazy. If you guys remember, we are in the middle of reading our book, Super Fudge, and this guy right here, Fudge, a little crazy. So. I'm excited to see where things are going. And if you haven't been reading with us, I really do suggest going back and finding a video where we start this book because you've missed some major plot points. But now for my friends who have been watching, hello, we are gonna jump right back in right where Peter got called down to the principal's office on the first day of school at his new school. Ooh. That would not have been fun if it was me in sixth grade. I would have been nervous. So let's jump right back in where we left off. All right. I found Mr. Green's office. I'm Peter Hatcher, I told his secretary. Go right in, she said. He's expecting you. You wanted to meet me? I said to Mr. Green. I mean, see me. Hello, Peter. Mr. Green looked something like my uncle, but my uncle is a clean shaven man and Mr. Green had a mustache. Now that my father is growing a beard, I'm more aware of these things. We're having a bit of a problem with your brother, Mr. Green said. Oh, so that was it. I should have known. We've tried to get your mother or your father on the phone, but there's no answer. So we were hoping you'd be willing to help us. What do you do this time, I asked. A number of things, Mr. Green said. Come on down to the kindergarten, I'll show you. We walked down the hall together. All the kindergarten babies were busy. Some were building with blocks, others were painting, and there was a group in the corner playing house. It was just the way I had remembered kindergarten, but I didn't see fudge anywhere. Oh, Mr. Green, Miss Hildebrandt said, limping over to us. I'm so glad you're here. I don't know what to do. He refuses to come down. I looked up. Fudge was perched on top of cabinets that were on top of the cubbies. He was stretched out, lying across the top, just inches from the ceiling. 
Hi, Peta, he called, waving. What are you doing up there, I said. Resting. Come down. No, I don't like this school. I quit. You can't just quit, Mr. Green said. Why not, Fudge asked. Because going to school is your job, Mr. Green said. Otherwise, what will you be when you grow up? A bird, Fudge told him. Mr. Green laughed. Creative, isn't he? Ah, uh, I wouldn't necessarily call it that, Miss Hildebrandt said. Why did he climb up there in the first place, I asked. Well, Miss Hildebrandt said, that's a long story. Because she was mean, Fudge called. M-E-A-N. Now, Mr. Green, Miss Hildebrandt said, you've known me for a long time. And I ask you, have I ever been mean to a child? Knowingly, consciously, or intentionally mean? Especially on the first day of school. She wouldn't call me Fudge, Fudge said. That's why I had to kick her. He kicked you? I asked Miss Fildebrandt. She held up her skirt and showed me the bruised shin. And I don't mind telling you, she said, that I was in great pain. I almost passed out right in front of the children. Is that when he climbed on top of the cabinets, I asked? That's correct. Because she wouldn't call me Fudge, Fudge said. It's not a proper name, said Miss Hildebrandt. And it's not as if he hasn't already got a proper name. He has, Fairly Drexel Hatcher. I told him that we would call him Fairly, or Drexel, or even FD. But she wouldn't call me Fudge. All the little kids turned around and suddenly the room was very quiet. That's right, said Miss Hildebrandt. Fudge is a good name for a candy. It's not a good name for a boy. I told you I'm a bird, Fudge shouted. There is something definitely wrong with this child, said Miss Hildebrandt. There's nothing wrong with him, I said. My mother calls him Fudge, my father calls him Fudge, my grandmother calls him Fudge, his friends call him Fudge, my friends call him Fudge, I call him Fudge, he calls himself Fudge. Yes, we get the picture, Mr. Green said. I can't imagine a parent actually deciding to call a child Fudge, Miss Hildebrandt said. You don't know my parents, I told her. Well, that's true, but I think what we have here is just a basic personality conflict, Mr. Green said. So I suggest we just transfer Fudge over to Miss Sif's kindergarten. Splendid idea, said Miss Hildebrandt. The sooner, the better. You can come down now, I told Fudge. You're going into the other kindergarten. Will the teacher call me Fudge, he asked. As long as you want her to, Mr. Green said. And will she let me play with the round blocks? Mr. Green gave Miss Hildebrandt a look. I never let them use the round blocks on the first day. It's one of my rules. You can't build anything good without the round blocks, Fudge said. Well, we'll ask Miss Ziff, Mr. Green told Fudge. But we do have rules here and you will have to obey them. As long as I can use the round blocks, Fudge said. Mr. Green loosened his shirt and wiped off his forehead with his handkerchief. Hurry up, I said to Fudge. I'm missing important things upstairs. Like what? Never mind, just get down. Fudge climbed down the top of the cubies and then Mr. Green reached up and lifted them down the rest of the way. Goodbye, Fairly Drexel, said Miss Hildebrandt. Goodbye, rat face, Fudge said to her. I gave him an elbow and whispered. You don't go around calling teachers rat face. Not even when they have one, he asked. Not even then, I told him. Mr. Green and I took Fudge to the next door, to Miss Ziff's kindergarten. She was reading Arthur, the anteater to the kids. I could tell Fudge was impressed. I know that story, he said. Arthur doesn't like the red ants. Mr. Green handed Miss Ziff Fudge's registration card. His name is Fairly Drexel, Miss Green said, but everyone calls him Fudge. Miss Ziff smiled at Fudge. I bet you're as sweet as your name, she said. I am. Just ask Miss Hildebrand, I said to myself. And just like that, my brother's school career had begun. All right, so that was a lot. Fudge was 
definitely a little, little crazy. I hope none of you are going around kicking your teachers. Please don't, that's not okay. But let's see where we go next time. We are on a new chapter when we start on Tuesday. It's called A Very Cultured Bird and we will pick up there. So I'm excited to share the rest of the story with you. But before I say my goodbyes, we have a riddle to talk about. Who remembers what our riddle was at the beginning of our video? Our riddle was, what's something that goes up and down but doesn't really move? Did you think of it? Did you crack the code? No worries, because I got you covered with the answer. The answer is stairs. Get it? They go up, they go down, but they're not moving. They're staying right where they are. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, enjoyed our book, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.